What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music and happy new decade. As decades pass, tech becomes obsolete, more so now in the present day than ever, and this goes for music gear as well. So today I want to answer the question, is the Novation Circuit still worth it in 2020? And my quick answer is yes, absolutely. For the long answer, I'm going to break it down by a few categories. <laughs> When it comes to price, the Novation Circuit pretty much stands on its own in terms of other comparable gear. It's more expensive than some standalone synths or a small groove box like the Pocket Operators, but we're trying to go a step up here. So if you're comparing this to something like the OP-1, the Digitact, even the Electribe, unless you're buying it used, this thing knocks the others out of the park for price. So for people on a budget trying to get into portable electronic music production or dollless electronic music production or get their first physical synth and or sequencer, this is a really good starting point because of its price. What really makes that price all the sweeter though is its competitiveness with the other devices that I just mentioned in terms of features, which leads me nicely to functionality. <laughs> This little device is surprisingly powerful in a few different ways. First of all, because of how many layers it packs into such a small form factor, especially when you consider that each synth track has six note polyphony, and when you consider that you can switch between samples on the fly on each drum track. So you can build up very complicated drum tracks and decently intricate synth tracks in such a tiny form factor. There's also the sound engine itself. The sound engine that the Novation Circuit runs on is a wavetable-based synthesizer engine, meaning that you can get all of your kind of nice subtractive analog emulation synthesis going on, but also some more kind of crazy sound design, some sound effects, heavy basses, evolving pads, and all that kind of cool stuff. Plus, there are a bunch of little features that they've brought in via firmware updates that make this thing even more powerful. Stuff like the ability to record in non-quantized beats, which they added last year, or the ability to do drones and have these infinitely long notes. There are also a surprising amount of options for manipulating samples. You can tweak the pitch, you can do envelopes, you can do distortion, you can do EQ all on this little thing, Plus, it has some pretty decent effects. You can automate pretty much any parameter, and doing all of this is pretty intuitive. This may be the aspect where the circuit shines the most for me. They've packed a ton of functionality into a really user-friendly interface, and this is one of the big reasons I keep coming back to it, despite having a DAW and, at this point, having amassed a decent collection of gear. I keep coming back to this because it's very fun to use, it's very quick to get ideas out, it's very inspiring for coming up with new ideas, it's super intuitive, and it's super hands-on. And it's an experience that I haven't been able to really replicate on any other groove box. I can kind of get close, but this is definitely more intuitive than the OP-1, which is a bit weirder of a workflow. And I'd also say it's more intuitive than something like the Electribe, which has a bit of a weird learning curve to it. And as I've already mentioned, I'm very impressed with how intuitive they've been able to make such a small device. <laughs> All right, so just look at this thing. This thing's really small. It's smaller than a laptop. It's smaller than a lot of the other synths and groove boxes out there. It fits very easily in a backpack with a bunch of other stuff thrown in as well. It's pretty light without feeling cheap. And all of this combines to once again, making this my go-to on the go music making device. During the week when I'm working or going to school, this thing pretty much just lives in my backpack and I can immediately take it out, just sit there on a small coffee shop table or just with it on my lap in a chair. And as I've mentioned before in previous videos, I've gotten a ton of inspiration just from being in different locations. Different locations will get me thinking about different kinds of music, get me in different kind of head spaces for making music. And so being able to take this pretty much everywhere with me means that I can always take advantage of inspiration when I have it, sit down and make something that actually sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. 
I've touched on this a little bit already, so I'll keep this section quick, but I've made pretty much every genre of electronic music imaginable on this thing, and it handles pretty much all of them really well. I've tried to play a few little audio examples throughout this video to give you an idea of that. So everything from synthwave to techno to drum and bass to progressive house, psychedelic trance, it handles all that stuff pretty well. Because of its synth engine and the way it deals with samples and the fact that there are a lot of packs for the Novation Circuit out there, this thing is very versatile. So you'll probably be able to get some use out of this thing no matter what genre you make. The one exception might be something really sound designy like Neurofunk or Dubstep, but for pretty much anything else, this thing handles it like a champ. The final category that I wanna talk about is a bit of a two-parter and these are linked live performance and connecting to other gear. So just by itself, it's quite a good live jamming tool. That's how you're meant to arrange songs on this thing. And that works out great for me as a YouTuber because it immediately allows me to make a music video just with the camera pointed at this. And it does pattern switching very similar to what you'd see on like an Ableton push or a launch pad. So it's got that kind of vibe to it. Once again, it's arrangement stuff is very tailored for live performance. So it's great for live performance by itself, but I've also seen it used a ton for live performance with other gear. I haven't really gone down that rabbit hole myself, but someone like Ricky Tynes has. He's used this as kind of a brain of a setup and I've seen other people do this as well. And it's got the inputs and outputs to actually make that work. So it's got some expandability to it. You can use this to sequence other gear and properly build up a live set. So you've got some room to grow on this thing. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to watch a video about what I consider to be the absolute best sound packs for the Novation Circuit, you can click tap up over here somewhere. Or if you'd like to see a playlist of all my Novation Circuit related videos, you can click or tap down over here. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video next week. Peace.